Okay, so today we're going to move into section 4.2. So 4.2, we're going to do over two days here. So 4.2, um, focus mainly on some properties with exponents, some graphing of exponential functions today. And then tomorrow we'll talk about exponential equations, how we can solve exponential equations, and then um, some applications as well. Friday we'll do logs and log equations. Okay, so we got still a fair amount we're gonna do. I think I told you next week, Thursday, we are gonna have a quiz and it's gonna be 4-1 through 4-4. So all this stuff from 4-1, these couple days of 4-2, we're gonna do two days of 4-3. And then I think we do two, th two days of 4-4, four, four, and then we take our quiz. All right, so just for a quick warm-up recall on working with exponential functions, how we can rewrite exponential functions as a radical and vice versa. Okay, so this first one, 5 raised to the 2 thirds, What's going to go in this index position up here in the top left of my radical symbol? What number is going to go up there? Three. Three. It's that denominator. So this is the cube root of 5 squared, or you think of it as a cube root of 25. If I wanted to rewrite with a rational exponent, square root of 7, what would be the exponent on this? 1 half. Okay, because this would be 2 in the index. An exponent of 1 here on the 7, and so you could rewrite it as 7 raised to the 1 half power. All right, so working with exponential functions. So the general form of an exponential function is going to be a raised to the x power. And that A represents some number. And we're going to be looking when A is greater than 0 and A is not equal to 1. Because 1 raised to anything is still going to be 1. But we're, this one we're focused right now just on positive values of A. We could have 1 half raised to the X power. And that will change based on X. But if A is 1, 1 raised to the 72nd is still 1. 1 raised to the 1 million is still 1. So that's why it's saying A cannot equal 1, or we're not worried about when A equals 1. All right, so some general characteristics of the graph of an exponential function. All right, and so we need to be able to work with, okay, I know or I have an idea what an exponential function looks like, but it will have all of these characteristics. If A is greater than 1, then F is an increasing function. Okay, that increasing function that we know as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. It's going to look something like that. If a is between 0 and 1, then it's going to be a decreasing function. So it would look Something like that. If we're between 0 and 1, so we have some fractional value, we actually have a decreasing function. The points negative 1, 1 over a, 0, 1, and 1a are on the graph. So really the only definitive one that we can say is this 0, 1, because this is where it crosses every single time, no matter if it's an a value between 0 and 1 or an a value greater than 1, it's always going to cross at 0, 1. So right there on the y-axis. But then depending on what your a is, the points negative 1, 1 over a, and the point positive 1, A, will also be on your graph.
the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, meaning it's never going to drop below the x-axis and it'll actually never even touch the x-axis. Because again, we're only working with a values greater than zero. We can manipulate it here in a minute to reflect and move stuff around. But in general form, we're thinking a greater than zero, the x-axis will be the horizontal asymptote. It will never drop below this horizontal axis. Okay. And then the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. I could put any x value I want in here, and it will go up to my graph. But then the range, again, I'm never going to have any y outputs below the x-axis. So it's going from 0, not inclusive, it will never be 0, all the way up to infinity. Okay. All right. So let's actually graph the exponential function one fifth raised to the x power and give the domain and range. So, what point do I know for sure is on my graph? on the graph of every exponential function. 0, 1. So if I put in 0, I'm going to get 1. So I know it's going to cross here. Okay. And then we also had, we know the point at negative 1 is going to be 1 over our a value. Okay. So if I put in negative 1, I'm going to end up with 1 over 1 fifth. What is 1 over 1 fifth? Matthew, what's 1 divided by 1 fifth? Correct. So I know negative 1, 5 would be a point, so I'm going to be up here somewhere. All right. Positive 1. Well, I know also that positive 1, comma, A will be a point. My A is 1 fifth. So that one's easy. That's just one and one fifth. And so it's going to be down here somewhere. Because my a is between zero and one, I know this is a decreasing function. And it'll look something like that that never touches the x axis. So it's a decreasing function. I know those three points for sure, just based on that last slide. And I could find more if I want to do more, but. 3 would be sufficient for me, and then show that it's a decreasing function, and that your my blue line here does not cross the x-axis. Okay. Now, with exponential functions, we can do reflections and translations. We can start moving them around. So again, a reflection doesn't change the shape of it. It's just reflected across an axis. A translation, that's just a shift. So again, the shape is not changing. It's literally, you're picking it up off the page, repositioning it, putting it back on the page. So I asked you to graph two raised to the x power but then also a negative 2 raised to the x power. What does the graph of 2 raised to the x power look like? Tell me, increasing or decreasing? Increasing, because 2 is greater than 1. What point do we know for sure it's going to go through? 0, 1. Okay. So it would look something like that. This is our function f of x. So I'll be more specific. I'll say f of x equals 2 raised to the x power. Now if I throw this negative out front, what's that going to do? 
but as x squared compared to negative x squared. What's those negative do? Patty, what do you think? So you think decreasing like from over here in quadrant two? Nope. Dayton, what do you say? Okay, so we're going to reflect over the x. So now this point, 0, negative 1, would be true. And yes, Teddy, I would say it is a decreasing function, but more specifically, it's a reflection across, and it's going down that way. So again, if you think of x squared as a parabola opens up, negative x squared as a parabola opens down. It's reflected over the x. Same thing applies here. Because you could even think of this as negative 1 times 2 raised to the x power. So this is basically saying every y value, the x's are going to stay the same. But if my y value was 2 times the negative 1, it's actually crossing here at negative 2. I'm a little off. But it's meaning that every y is going to change because of that negative being applied. Okay. What about this one? So still working with 2 raised to the x power. What about in my exponent now? I change this to 2 raised to the x plus 3. So think of our reflection translation rules that we had when now it's Instead of just x, it's x plus 3. It's going to shift it. Which way is it going to shift? Left. So this will actually shift three units left. And so instead of saying at 0, 1, it's going to be at negative 3, comma 1. And then from there, it's going to start climbing. All right, so even in the exponent, x plus 3 means my parent function 2x is shifted 3 units to the left. Easy enough. All right, last one. Still my parent function 2x, but now we have 2 raised to the x minus 2 minus 1. Okay, so we know this point right here is going to be to the right 2 units. And then down 1. Okay, so we went right 2 units. We went down one unit, but this new point is where it's curving. Remember on the parent function, the, the x-axis was the horizontal asymptote. Well, now y equaling negative 1 would be the horizontal asymptote because we're shifting everything down one. And so this one would actually look like, like that. All right, so this one did dip below the x-axis because of that subtract 1 created a new horizontal asymptote. What about domain and range of this new function? What's the domain going to be? Okay, we could have anything, negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. What about the range? Inclusive or not inclusive? Ah, so negative 1 all the way up to infinity. Pretty easy. 4.2, day 1. Okay. Uh, I actually need to open it up for you.